Hey, what's going on everybody? Good afternoon. It is Saturday, May 23rd, 2020. It is 4.10 p.m. You know the show starts at 4 o'clock. It's 4.10. I usually need a little bit of a 10-minute startup, you know, get myself together. But today, as you saw in the thumbnail, we're going to be going over having a little OSHA talk. Um, I got some information, some updates. Uh, and plus, we're going to go and I'm going to show you guys, we're going to read up some uh, things for you guys to prepare on when you're about to, you know, go through an OSHA uh, inspection. There's also going to be the um, the courses that are available on the specific website that I'm on. Now, there are other websites that you go on and check out if maybe you're, you have a specific website you go to to go to your online OSHA training, um, you know, to each his own. But I'm going to give this out to you guys uh even for those of you who are you know you're an apprentice you're starting off you haven't got your osha 10 or maybe you're required to have your osha 30 here like myself here in new york city we're required to have osha 30 no longer osha 10 and we have to have an additional 10 hours of osha so basically 40 hours and so on but i'm not gonna get i'll get all to i'll get all that in order with you guys but I gotta play the intro first. Let's get started. All right, so we're back. What's going on, everybody? Uh, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Jonathan. I go by Klein Guy John. Klein Guy John is also my channel. Um, if you're wondering where I got the nickname, there's some of you out there who want to know why I'm called that. Uh, listen to it. There's some videos I did in the past. You want to go check out my previous videos? You can go ahead and check it out. I had done previous live streams, so you could check out. Or uh, maybe if you want to know more and if it's your first time being here let me know i could do a whole intro, intro reintroduction live stream or video whatever you want i'll do um but in the meantime we're talking osha here me devil's the first one here i think the music it's too mel melodic <laughs> well that's the whole thing I, i'm 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 mixing it up you know for every uh the music is, is getting mixed up every time I do a live stream. So, you know, not to stick with the same old music, except for my uh, my live stream ending music. I, I, I kind of like that that beat, that R&B type uh, rap, hip hop type beat, however you want to call it. But anyways, let's get started. So as you saw in the thumbnails, if you clicked on this and you, you know, it's your, your apprentice, maybe you're an old timer, maybe, you know, you just want... You just want to go for your OSHA 30 or OSHA 10. You don't know where to look and you can't go to class because of the quarantine and the, you know, because of the pandemic. Have no fear. I have a solution for you. All right. May cost you a little bit of money. Not too much, but it's, you're better off taking an in, an in-house class than, you know, sitting for 10, 30 hours going in five times, five days a week or you know for two weeks and so on or you know ruining your weekend maybe you, you know you want to enjoy your weekend and you know then not, not cause you're, you, know, you feel like your body's working too much so here's here's what here's the solution we're going to get right to it right now I'm just going to set up here so that way you guys get a better look uh who else is it amos cardoza what's going on buddy good afternoon my friend good afternoon what's good brother i'm good my friend how are you doing hope you're doing well Hope everybody's doing well. I really hope so. All right, so let's get to the nitty gritty. All right, so I'm gonna read some. Uh, I'm gonna read this article. All right, so here we are. All right, so this is from 360training.com. All right, and they have their own editorial team there, and they this was just you know emailed to me early midnight. So. It says, what to expect from an OSHA inspection. 
And I'm going to read this out, so follow along with me. If I'm going too fast, let me know. I'll slow it down. I'll go back. I don't mind. I got time, all right? Um, I'm chilling, cuz. I'm glad you're chilling. All right, so here we go. So, it says here, even if you have nothing to hide, an OSHA inspection can be intimidating. The best way to, claim, to calm your nerves about a potential check is to understand what OSHA inspections entail and how you can prepare for them. In this blog post, we will answer some of your most frequently asked questions. What is an OSHA inspection? What happens during an OSHA inspection? How do you prepare for an OSHA inspection? Let's get started. So the first question is, why does OSHA perform inspections? There are four main reasons OSHA performs inspections. The first one is the complaint inspection. The most common reason OSHA inspects a business is because an employee has filed an official complaint with OSHA about the business safety practices. Two, the fatality and accident inspection. OSHA may inspect the business after a report of workplace injuries or fatalities that affected three or more people. This includes accidents and injuries that don't result in hospitalizations or deaths. So in other words, for the first one, I'll go over with you. If in, let's say you're on the job site, right? It's a mess. There's, there's, you know, extension cords all over the place. You're, you know, you're, you're having a hard time getting around the job site. You know, there's, uh, there's holes on, you know, there's holes in the ground that lead to the next floor downward. There's nothing protecting. There's no, you know, piece of plywood covering it or fastened down to cover it. No markings, nothing. And you're just getting sick of it. Now you have the right, you do have the right to complain to OSHA about these unsafe conditions. Okay. It's always important when you're going to the job site, you are safe, you know, but not, you know, every job site is not 100% safe, but you always have to keep in mind that you got to look around, do your 360, 20-foot rule, and make sure you're, you know, every, all you know, all around you, 20 feet, 20, within 20 feet or more, or within 20 feet, I should say, in, in a 360 rule, you got to make sure you're safe, there's nothing in your way, you know, make sure, you know, if, if you see, you know, holes or, you know, ledges that don't have safety, barriers or safety railing you got every right to complain um I, I would suggest going to the site super letting him know listen there's a site there's a you know there's an area here that's not safe there's no there's no railing on the stairway it's unsafe i'm not gonna work in this area and so on if they don't do anything about it you got the right to complain all right moving on three the programmed inspection these inspections target random businesses that are den I'm sorry, they are deemed particularly dangerous or hazardous according to their standard industry classification codes. Uh, SIC for short, or SIC, we call them. Four, the imminent danger inspection. Thankfully, these ocean inspections occur at the least frequently as prompt is reports as the prompt is reports of imminent dangers. So there we go. We got a lot, to, we're gonna we're gonna be going through all this. This is a lot of, in, in, in an article, but it's just to prepare you guys, even though, even for some of you who are just about to start being foreman soon, all right, you know, you want to keep, you want to keep in mind about, you know, getting ready for an inspection, you know, or if you're a site super, it's going to, it's going to be your first day on a construction site, you're going to be the first day supervisor and so forth, you want to be prepared. Um, and this is a good, this is good for you apprentices as, as well, first years or helpers to kind of get you know, to kind of get ahead of things, you know, to, to prepare you for what's coming up in the job site, what what to expect for in ocean inspections. All right. So we are moving on. And let me get to the comments first. So every question I every question I read and I jot down, I'm going to look at some of the guys comments and see who's here. So new New Jersey workshop says OSHA sucks. Hey, man, if you're on a construction site. You got you got to be OSHA compliant, bro. Safety, listen, safety is key in every in any construction site because you want to come home in one piece, right? You got a family, you make money, you got to bring the income home, you got to pay the bills, you know, and you want to come home safe to your family. So, I, I you know, we all have to abide OSHA, regu uh, OSHA rules, all right? Uh, Amos Cardoso says, gentlemen, have a wonderful afternoon. I got to get back to the gardening. Stay safe, peeps. Adios, amigos. You too. 
Hermano, I will see ya. OSHA taking away job site funds since 1956. <laughs> Listen, man, you, you can still have a little fun. But, you know, you just gotta, you gotta follow the rules, man. What can I say? What can I say? What can I say? All right, where, were I, where was I right now? Here we go, right here. So the next question is, uh, whoa, whoa, I went too fast here, did I? Yes, I did. Ah, so here's uh, the next part of it. I didn't read this part. It says, when OSHA shows up on your doorstep, you should ask them what prompted the inspection so that you're better prepared for what comes next. All right, moving on to the second question. What to do once OSHA initiates an inspection? Once OSHA appears and is ready for inspection, you have two choices. One, let them in without a problem. And two, request that the OSHA inspectors obtain an administrative warrant before you allow them into the building. Depending on the state, some OSHA inspectors will come with, an, with a warrant in hand. If they don't already have one and the workplace demands one, the delay to get a warrant can be anywhere from a few days to a week. While this delay can give business time, businesses time to ensure everything is in order for the inspection, most of the time when businesses request a warrant, it's merely due to company policy. So right here is just explaining, like, you know, if you encounter an OSHA inspector who's coming in, got his ID, but doesn't have, you know, you, you can ask that question, you know, what does this inspection pertain? Uh, does he have an administrative warrant? You know, or it, as it says in some states, they may even get a warrant from a judge, a state judge, and just to see, you know, because due to maybe uh, an amount of co complaints and a file of complaints and stuff, they want to see what's really going on in the job site. They'll give the, they'll go to court. I guess they'll go to the courtroom, get a, a warrant for that location, a warrant for, you know, for inspection, and they'll have every right to come in and basically kind of like the cops, you know, but they're just the uh, construction police. All right, so let's see. So we read that part. It's it's important to note that OSHA will almost always take the time to get an administrative warrant. So requesting one will not put off the inspection forever. All right. Next question is, what is the inspection process like? The OSHA inspection process consists of five major steps. The opening conference, the walk around or walk through, employee interviews, records reviews, and the closing ceremony and the closing ceremony. So step one of that opening conference. As the name suggests, the opening conference is the first meeting between the OSHA inspector and management at this point. The OSHA inspector will explain what prompted the inspection and provide documentation. If the inspection is due to a workplace complaint, the inspector will provide a copy for the employer's records. If the inspection is a programmed inspection, the employer will need to explain their business to the OSHA inspector and provide their SIC documentation. The inspector and management will also need to ensure they're aligned on what areas of operations the inspector can look at as determined by the SIC code. Basically, if you're a business, you know, you, you're a small business or maybe you're, you're, you're a huge construction contractor and, you know, OSHA so happens to show up. Yeah, you know, you want to make sure that you explain the business and well, like, what are your guys doing on site? Are they doing concrete work? Are they doing electrical work, doing plumbing? Um, how many guys you have in, in, in the field? Um things like that and uh you know just to make sure you have your sic documentation uh present when they're there so that way they can understand what's you know what the deal is that's going on on the job site so they can get a better better picture of what to look for as well all right um so step two the walk around oh me devil what's going on me devil we have the s the hse health and safety executive have right of entry and have way more power of entry than the police so you don't have time to clean up your mess <laughs> you 
yeah that happens you know sometimes it happens with uh with us too um i've i've been on a job site where osha will show up they will basically some osha inspectors will look like they have they, they look like a one of us and we won't even know it you know they'll come around like they're kind of like undercover cops like they come around hard hat reflective jacket uh somewhere like a backpack or some carry literally carry a tool bag i've seen one guy only one in my time where he carries a little tool bag he's got a tool belt on he's walking around he's got a little phone a little you know cell phone he'll just sneak in pictures and stuff and just pretend like you know he's just walking around looking for a place to work and stuff um and then there's those who just wear their backpack got a clipboard they got their phone ready hard hat reflective jacket safety glasses sometimes they wear gloves sometimes they don't and they'll just walk around take pictures write little notes in their clipboard and then then that's how we'll know that's an ocean inspector he just walks around with clipboard backpack whatever um the one time i only seen uh an ocean inspector actually literally looking mixing in with the guys on the job site when, when i just when he's carrying a little tool bag and stuff like that which is pretty sneaky uh but i i noticed him because um i mean i i've seen him whip out his phone take pictures and then that's how i knew and you know from there um you know, guys would, would see that too. Other guys would start spreading the word. Like, oh, you know, OSHA's here. They're doing inspection and what have you. So, you know, look good, clean up, and make sure there's no um, no extension cords. And that's a big thing. Um, when it comes down to a job site, I got to tell you guys something. It, it irks me. I'm sorry. This is the wrong camera. Whoops. It really, irk, it really irks me that... Every time I'm on a job site, I see tons of extension cords, man. And the best thing to do when you're running extension cords, or like before, for instance, you're, you know, the job's about to start. You got all your temp lights up. You got temporary power and stuff like that there. Us as, a, as an electrician, I like to just start putting in spare J hooks around the, you know, the, the metal studs or wood studs, however you want to want to say, like for temporary, you know, if they're temporarily holding um ceiling uh, a ceiling and, and what have you or you know supporting uh beams you put them all around like stairways and stuff and just kind of like you know run your extension cords and loop them there you don't want extension cords all over the floor you want to keep everything clear for guys to walk through because they're walking around with carts material all that stuff and it can be a very it could be a very dangerous even uh, yeah very dangerous tripping hazard you know i've seen guys trip carrying boxes material not looking where they're going and they don't notice there's a, there's a extension cord all you know tangled up and they trip over it and what happens they fall with the material and they hurt themselves you know and get have a serious in um have a serious injury so you want to make sure that you're on a job site make sure you're you know whenever you're running extension cords you know find ways that yeah you can even put them over like unistruts pipe existing plumbing and stuff like that um anything like that, that's supporting off from a ceiling or up on a wall just throw it over um make sure it's it's clear from the ground uh and make sure it's long enough uh preferably a 50 foot extension cord is preferred um i prefer 50 foot instead of a 25 foot some places you may have to like extend your your extension cord where there's no outlets close by so you want to have that 50 foot length all right so just to just to throw it out there just throwing that down because i've seen a lot of guys trip over extension cords and break um corded power tools and so, and so forth or damage the extension cord for that matter and what we got me dibble says when you see the undercover inspectors is walk up to them and ask what it like for working for osha <laughs> actually here's a here's a funny story um before the whole uh city shutdown um and i was at the Times square um job on the on the job site i saw an ocean inspector and he was pretty cool. He's a nice guy. Pretty cool guy. You know, he asked for my card and I showed it to him. He said, oh, okay. And then I just, I, I just, uh, I started singing a little, uh, what was that? How did it go? It was kind of like a Willy Wonka version of it. And he, I said, uh, what was it? I said, come with me and you'll see a world of OSHA violations. <laughs> Broken knees, lawsuit sprees across the nation. <laughs> So he kind of laughed at that. It was it was funny. He was like, "Oh, that's a, that's clever." Yeah, it was pretty cool. But anyways, let's move on, guys. Let's go to step two. 
then step two is the walk around all right once the opening conference is finished the osha inspector will start their walk around of the appropriate areas of the building and business operations an employee is allowed to escort the inspector throughout their entire walk around an employee remember that any employee it could be it could be a mechanic apprentice helper whatever if the the form is not there you know if your foreman's not there you're the only one there go with him if he's asking hey uh you know i'm here to do this walk with him take some notes you know take a notepad or something with you take notes of what he says what he sees kind of do a little i, I like kind of doing my little own report just so that you know you have a list of things you need to clear up and make sure that the next ocean inspection that comes around you're ready for that and you leave it with your foreman and say hey look this is what was the issues there were some issues here and there that he noticed um nothing you know nothing too serious at the moment but can be a serious problem later on if we don't bring our attention to it and so forth all right so throughout the walk around the inspector will take photos of videos or videos showing the presence of or lack of OSHA violations many they will focus on areas mentioned in any complaints inspectors will also take measurements and test air quality to complete the walk around inspection I didn't know they do that interesting don't worry this is not beer it's it's Stewart's key lime I love Stewart's all right moving on uh okay so step three employee interviews while the ocean inspector is completing their walk around they should interview around 10 percent of employees and at least one employee in each operational function these interviews are short and are mostly conducted over the shoulder or while the employee is still working the inspector simply looks over the employee's shoulder and ask them the questions. The interview questions cover simple topics, the employee's job duties, their level of training, and their understanding of hazards that face them. So be mindful that, you know, if you're an apprentice, uh, for those of you who are like starting out in the trade, if you, you know, for instance, you're like myself as an electrician, you're starting out as an electrician, you're an apprentice, you're a first year helper, um, you know, you, you know, someone comes up to you and asks you a question. You know, he's got a notepad, hard hat, and, ocean, and it's an ocean inspector. He starts asking you questions, or a site supervisor. Just let them know what your what your level of training is. All right, and don't brag. I, I've seen, I hear guys who do that. They brag and they don't know a lot. So just be honest. That way, they get a clear idea of like you know who's on the site, you know, and how much experience pe certain people have on the site as well. Okay. Uh, uh, the interview questions cover simple. Plan. Okay, so we read that. Step four is reviewing records. The OSHA inspector finishes their inspection by reviewing any and all OSHA required documents and records. This typically includes OSHA 200 logs, OSHA 101 forms, and written programs. All these documents must be relevant to the inspection and must be within OSHA's required documentation inspectors cannot review records that other regulatory agencies require all right there's one you could uh, look out for there as well i mean this is pretty much basic stuff you you know that you guys should know when it comes down to like ocean inspections when you're on the job site now and, and i'm i'm glad that i'm sharing this with you guys and those of you who are you know saying oh OSHA sucks this and that oh you know all this already i get that I get you know all this, but you got to understand something. We have a new generation of younger men and women who are coming into this workforce, into this trade. They need to understand how OSHA works, how an inspection works. That way they're prepared, right? So those of you who have been out there for 30, 20, 10, 20, 15, 30, 45, 80, whatever years, and you got all the experience, you know how this works. Listen, that's great. You don't have to be here if you don't want to be. You know, don't get all angry and start leaving stuff in the chat and say, "Well, I know all this. You ain't you ain't saying nothing new." Look, I understand that. It's not new. But this 
information can be useful for the younger generation all right so now that I clear that up let's move on all right so step five closing conference the inspection is officially over when the inspector calls the closing conference at this point the inspector will summarize their findings and note any citations or fines the business may be receiving if the employer doesn't agree with the citation or fund or findings they have 15 days to the to protest the findings to the area office so in other words if you know for some reason let's not say that they, they don't they don't agree or anything like that they let's say they uh they have other things to do and they'll say oh we'll deal with that later you know they may forget so they have 15 days osha gives us gives the employer 15 days to rem rem how am i saying that rectify whatever it is that was found as a violation to osha regulation and ruling um and they have 15 days basically to protest the findings um Let's say there's like a hole. Uh, you're on the fifth floor. There's a hole in the, uh, that's not closed up. Ocean came by and put a, a citation on it. You know, and they said, well, look, if you don't fix this, you don't cover it up, you don't put markings and tape or caution tape or anything like that around it, within the 15 days, you don't re rectify this, you're going to have to pay for that, that fine or, you know, I don't, I'm not sure how they how else they'll do it. Like I said, just pay the fine and that's it. Or they'll shut down the job site depending on the severity of uh, violations that they find. So that's basically it. They give us they give you 15 days and you have to you know, once you remedy the the situation, you have to report that it's been fixed to come have them come back, see if it's you know see if it's uh, acceptable, um, if it's safe, and OSHA will go back and basically document and document everything that was that was remedied and uh and that's it um if they find that it's not uh adequate um they they will still slap you with the fine uh normally if they see other fines like uh guys not wearing hard hats um they go around they take pictures they find out uh who that person works for is the electrician what contractor works for they basically would not just give one fine they give a fine per employee so let's say they go okay this guy didn't wear a hard hat no safety glasses i'm taking a picture oh he works for so and so uh, i found three guys in that same company not wearing hard hats and safety and, and ppes on the job site that's a violation oh it's i'm just gonna throw a number out it's like six seven hundred dollars per employee it's a lot of money it's a lot of money and the company has to pay it or let's say it's 20 27 000 per employee that's a ton of money right there so you got to be very careful especially as an employee as an apprentice as well for you young apprentices out there make sure you're always wearing your ppe on the job site you don't want to get caught not wearing safety glasses gloves and hard hat and safety boots um don't get caught you know because uh it's not coming out of your paycheck it's actually coming out of your boss's pocket and he gets the fine, not you. All right, so learn about OSHA inspections with outreach training. The best way to avoid any trouble when you're faced with an OSHA inspection is to adhere to OSHA standards. For the most in-depth and up-to-date information, sign up for one of our OSHA 10 and OSHA 30 outreach training courses today. All right, so um, let's get to that. They do... Uh, 360training.com they do OSHA training courses right, you could take online uh, they basically give you I believe seven months uh, the day you purchased the course you got six to seven months within that time limit before the the time uh, expires so let's say you're you purchase it you decide oh I'm gonna take a five month uh, I'll do it in five months because I have other things to do then you only got one month or so left to do it and it takes it takes quite a while to do it online as well it's not as you know depending on how dedicated and how you know committed you are into it um 
I would suggest once you purchase it, do like maybe do a couple of units, do a couple couple of modules, and uh, start off doing a couple of modules first, and then schedule yourself. You know, because um, I mean you can do it in your own comfort of your own home, which is great, and anytime you want. Uh, but you basically have, I believe, it's seven hours each day to do it. And after that seven hours expires, within that day, um, the course closes off. You can save where you left off and go back to it tomorrow. Um, so it it only expires after the six-month period. After six months has expired and you haven't done anything, you haven't even gone halfway through it, it's going to close it off and you have to start, you have to repurchase the course and start all over again. So I just want to make that clear to you guys. So here it is. 360training.com top courses. They have the OSHA 30-hour construction training with free study guide. They also have the 10-hour construction training for with free study guide. You can buy these or you can just get, you can also, they even have the has power, the has whopper. I guess they call it, or 40-hour plugs, GHS hazards communication, MSHA annual refresher training. So this site has, it's not just only for OSHA. They they do other certifications in construction as well. Uh, engineering, uh, they take, they even have electrical courses, uh, which is not that expensive. So let's see, uh, OSHA 30, which I have. If you're going for an OSHA 10, be sure also if you're going to buy purchase any of these uh, courses you have to register with 360training.com it's 89 bucks have it for 69 so maybe 60. um i've been with i've been doing 360 training for a while i always go come here for my osha training um so it's it's just more convenient more laxed for me to do it from home on a laptop instead of actually going to in-house. So it's $89 here for the Ocean 10. Oh, look at that. I got coupons. Let's see. Coupons. Let's see if they have a coupon for it. Maybe I get like a 10% discount or something. Oh, I guess it's not working. Oh, there it goes. Don't to see the training off the clock. <laughs> my, my, my. This is taking up some... Some of the FPS, but let's see. Oh, you saved 30 bucks. Oh, look at that. Working code. So there's a code right here for it. Originally, it was 89 bucks With Honey, you get it for $59. Look at that, 60 bucks. If you have, if you go online on honey.com, you get added to your Chrome uh, search web and it will automatically find uh, coupons. So check it out. I just saved by using the promo code. You, I say it saved me some bucks, some moolah. So I only pay 60 bucks. All right. So let's go continue to check out. Uh, oh, they also offer 10% off, which is great as well. I'm pretty sure. So there you go. Look, it's been added. That's been added right here. So this is the code right here. Let me just highlight it. Oh, no, that's not it. I'm going to highlight the code. No, that's not it either. I can't do it for some reason. I don't know why it's not letting me do it. There we go. Oh, what are you doing? So this code right here, uh, 03EHS1259, use that code. They take off. 30 bucks you're only paying 60 bucks instead of 89 there you go you got a dis they offering discounts all right now for osha 30 let's go back let's see if we can get a better price osha 30. osha 30. osha 30. let's see 189 bucks so let's see what the promo code Let's see what Honey does for me on this. Here we go. So there you go. The same promo code right here. So if you want this promo code, I'll give it to you right now. It's right here. Highlighted right there. It's 03EH. 
S1259. This is reapply the coupon. Oh, I don't know why it's redoing that again. I mean, it already, I just asked to reapply it and it's going through all the, co the promotions again. I don't know. It doesn't have to. So it's $189 for OSHA 30. If you want to spend that, let's see if we get $30 off. Come on, come on, come on. I mean, I like I like the honey key here, the for honey.com. This is awesome. I'm I I really glad I you know added this to my Google Chrome. Why would you pay money for training that your employer should fully fund? Well, here's the thing. Um. I like doing it online and if you can come up with an agreement with your job and say listen I want to do it online at home oh wait it didn't take it off that's that's odd you have entered a duplicate promotion code okay oh yes except sorry yeah, that didn't work I wonder why I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, check out, sign up. Um, there's got to be a better way to check out of here. I guess it didn't work for some odd, strange reason. But try it anyway, guys. Uh, see what you can get out of it. I mean, if it does take thirty bucks off, one eighty nine. I would assume it'd be. Uh, this is on my way. 30. Ah, you're paying at 159. Let's uh, hope it, hoping that it does take off $30 off this. You're paying 159. It's not bad, you know, but now as you as I was just sold here by Zafael. Now, for me, um uh, my my job, my comp the company I work for, they offered the classes, but it's on weekends and you know, some guys don't want to use up the weekend so what i did you know use up the weekends to go to those classes and then they're not they have to be there all day and not able to do what they have to do after work because they you know but for me since i live in staten island they they send our guys to uh in the city weekends here it's 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 a bit of, it's a bit of a hassle for transportation so i came with an agreement where okay i'm going to take it online I'll purchase it, but I get reimbursed later on. And that's what they do. If you have a company in that would be willing to reimburse you the money if you're taking online, then do that. You you spend the money after you're done completing the course and got your certification. You email and say, hey, look, here's my certification done. They'll give, they should, you know, if you have that agreement with them, they'll give you, they'll reimburse you on your paycheck, which they have done for me in the past. Um, so that's the agreement. Plus, I do it. I'll do it every day, like after work. If I'm on the train, you can also you can also take this. If you go on 360training.com, you can also purchase it on on your mobile phone, and you can literally do it on your phone. You can be on the you know you could be on a train or a bus. You can take the course, save, do what you got to do, go home, do it on your laptop. Everything's saved up. Log in, and you're easy breezy, man. It's convenient. Because it gives you any time you want to do, you know, you're on your own schedule. You know what I'm saying? But you have six months, you have within six months to complete the course. All right. But I like 360 training. It could be, it could be a bit time consuming uh, in each module. Uh, OSHA 10, I, you know, if depending on which state you live in, if they just require to have OSHA 10 or OSHA 30, that's fine. But here in New York City, they require you to have OSHA 30. And then they want you to take an additional 10 hours. Um, so basically an OSHA 10 card would not count in this matter because it's already included into the OSHA 30. So I have to take other, uh, I have to take two more courses, I believe. I have to take a, a, a I literally have to go take an in-house course. Um, but since I can't because of the pandemic, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. Um, they might extend it till next year. We're supposed to have 40 hours or a SST card or which stands for site uh, 
uh, site safety training uh, card. Um, it's basically it, it basically represents all like all the courses we went through, like um, um, you know, taking your OSHA courses, your your uh, alcohol, um, your alcohol, um, what do they call it? The alcohol something uh, class. It's, it's a bunch of courses in a but they my my job provides that they send our guys over but it's in house course there's no online course for that so unfortunately i mean there is but it's like well over a thousand bucks because it's an entire bundle entire course and it's 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 too expensive so um for me now i'm not if i'm going to be a supervisor or like a, a foreman i can take the sst card uh to sst course <clears throat> oh excuse me and require and acquire my sst card but i'm not that i'm not there yet um so what i'm doing now i have to do is just take two more uh, courses i have to take a uh fall prevention course and i have to take a i have to take a blood and alcohol uh blood pathogen alcohol course or whatever it's i can't geez i i, I don't know I'm, I'm terrible at remembering that but yeah, it's like an alcohol, um, blood and alcohol um, course where you know you have to basically train you to, to see if you know any uh, to look for anyone who's been using alcohol or drunk or anything like that, or you know um, being aware of uh, bloodborne pathogens and stuff like that. Uh, so that's another course, and that can add on those two courses add on as my additional ten hours for my OSHA thirty. And then I'll then if I take those two courses, get the certification, then I have my 40 hours um, and I can still work on the job site. But I currently hold a th only an OSHA 30 card and an OSHA 10, but uh, and uh, also eight hour safety um, an eight hour. What's it called? Eight hour uh, scaffold training card. Scaffold safety training card, which I also hold. Uh, that's also required in the SST course, which I already had. I had gotten two years ago uh they're good for i think it's four years not two years ago did i get two years ago yeah i did get two years ago oh i'm sorry i got it last year uh last summer so it's good for it's a four-hour course and i believe it's good for four years uh, and it's every four years i have to take the um four-hour uh scaffold safety training course or they call the scaffold user card really so i'm um, i i will i have to present i have to, i have to present that card to a site safety or a site super um if he sees me climbing on a on a scaffold i have to be certified and have a card in hand saying that i'm i'm aware of how the scaffold works and aware of safety measures and i'm uh i'm able to work on a scaffold uh, so that's also included for part of the 10 hour uh, OSHA course or 10 hour additional OSHA time. But I need I need 10 more hours <laughs> of it. So. So, yeah, this is it, guys. Um, so if you're down, if you're the type that doesn't want to go to the in-house courses, you can go online 360 training dot com or whatever website, you know, um, that you're more, you know, that you're more recognizable with that you're more comfortable being on that you're you're more familiar with um i'm more familiar with 360 training it's easy it's easy it's easy to access to my courses they have records of all the courses taken all my uh test scores or everything um even has copy of copies of my certification so in case you know i lose my my card i could print out um a certification or email to the site uh, super uh, and reap and purchase the card on the same website I believe they go I think it's ten dollars on this website at 360 train they offer people who have taken the OSHA 30 or OSHA 10, OSHA can and not only that, it's not also it, it's not only for construction it's also for environmental hate health, uh, health and safety this website is also for real estate uh, you're into real estate you want to become a real estate agent there's classes they have a pre-licensing they have a trek sae course post licensing course they have a bunch of other stuff if you're in the restaurant industry 
you want to get you know certified for alcohol seller server food handler look they have all these courses here on 360training.com and uh additional training areas let's see they also have insurance pre-license insurance continuing education the NERC continuing education harassment training industrial skills power and utilities trades and engineering hr compliance business skills you name it man if if you're into that if you're in, you know you're growing your you're an employee in a restaurant industry and you need to have certifications to handle alcohol and serve alcohol and, and food you want you can go to 360 training learn to serve you can go to if you're being a real estate agent you want to learn more about real uh, real estate but you need the license and you need some certifications 360 training has it for you construction they have it they have mostly everything for you em third em 385 one one training has whopper training osha 30 uh 10 hour osha 10 hour course so it's a it's a pretty good website i mean it's you know some courses are expensive than others um but they you know you want to look for those uh discounts you know those coupons uh let's see here um i believe let's see 10 hour, uh 30 hour osha training Zafael says, hopefully they not only reimburse you for certification, but also for your time. Well, technically, if you're getting it on your own, they're going to tell you, hey, if, listen, if you're going to get it on your own, that's fine. But if you're doing it online on a weekend at your own time, eh, it is what it is. I mean, most companies, they won't, unless you're like maybe, I guess, in certain unions. And if you're doing it on your own time or most certain most unions will send you out anyway it's free um or some companies just don't do it you know they'll or they'll do it maybe they will do it who knows uh let's see osha 30 tree hour construction general industry hmm covers 29 s uh cfr 1910 regulations dol card included watch our osha 30 construction video what is OSHA 30 training? Okay, so he says, do I need construction or general industry training? Well, there's a bunch of questions here we could read on for those of you who are just apprentices or helpers and you're, you're trying to get into the construction trade. So here's some information. Let's play this video. What our OSHA 30 training course is video. Oh, it directs you to YouTube. Okay. Lit just sent me this wireless solar type C power bank. Let's see what's inside. Power bank has 20 amps and can charge your iPhone or. Are you looking to advance in the construction industry, but think you don't have the time to get the training you need? Are rigid classroom schedules preventing you from taking the next step in your career? Get trained easily and around a schedule that works with 360training.com's 30-hour OSHA outreach course for construction. Outreach training is available online and is designed for busy professionals looking for flexibility not found in a traditional classroom. 360 Training is a nationwide OSHA accepted provider with training that meets the latest OSHA standards. Benefits include ability to access the course around a busy work schedule, finish training in as little as four days, all the way to six months, auto bookmarking to never lose your place 100 percent online with 24 7 support dedicated osha outreach training on staff to answer any questions our 30-hour outreach course for construction has no prerequisites and comes with a free study guide to help you master the course upon successful completion a certificate of completion is available to download immediately an official osha dol wallet card is mailed within six to eight weeks Training online is not only easy and convenient, it's cost effective. 360 Training is a low cost provider that helps you save big with tiered pricing for groups as low as six users. Get the skills needed to power your way up the ladder. Enroll now and watch how far you'll go. Well, there you go. So what is OSHA 30 Training? OSHA 30 is the outreach and training intended for those with supervisory duties, including safety directors, four persons, and field supervisors. 
This 30-hour course covers a more extensive range of topics as supervisors need to know the rules for everyone working under them. So initially that's what OSHA 30 is. But here in New York City, since the accidental rates are freaking skyrocketing because lack of OSHA training, um, a lot of a lot of fines are given out and job sites are shutting down because of lack of training. Guys are showing up not wearing their hard hats, uh, not wearing safety glasses, goggles. There's more accidents, people injuring themselves, or in some cases, or some or in some cases even death on a job site. And what happens is these um, companies, these contractors, get fined, or they, you know, they go to court. Uh, families lose, you know, family members have to deal with losing a, a loved one who are, who's in construction and they have to, then they go off and they have to go sue the, the contractor and it, it's a whole big mess. And here in New York City, there's a lot of that going on. So now they're really enforcing the city of New York to have every construction site and every employee and in every trade have OSHA, uh, their OSHA cards. It was originally 10 hours. You can have either 10 or 30. And originally the 30 hours is just for supervisors and foremen. So if you had an OSHA 30 card on site, you were the competent, uh, you were the competent uh, worker. In case like your your foreman was out and you're the only one who had the OSHA 30, while everyone has OSHA 10, you are the most competent person on site. You would have to uh, in in your crew, not on site, but in the uh, in your trade. So if I was if if I was, let's say, just a sub foreman, I had my OSHA 30. My foreman has his OSHA 30. Everybody else had OSHA 10. My foreman somehow gets injured or 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 calls out sick for a couple of days. I'm the one that's left being the competent one and taking charge, taking over for him, continuing on the job, making sure everyone, you know, every um, there's no discrepancies on the job site. Like there's no hazards, tripping hazards, uh, falling hazards. Um, everything safe, uh, no electrical hazards. You know, I have to look for these things as b before and even after the job site is, you know, ev before and after. Um, so that's basically what it was. And but since more and more people are coming in, uh, are coming in without an OSHA card, you know, OSHA is now enforcing the fact that no, it's no longer required for us you know, tradesmen here in the city of New York, all these workers to have OSHA 10, it, it makes no sense anymore. So they have to go take OSHA 30. Everyone's required to have an OSHA 30 card and also an additional 10 hours um, to have before, I believe, June, I believe it was June 14th. I think so, but I, I'm, but since now we're in a pandemic, I, I'm, they might have to, they may or may not push it. I, I don't know if they're going to push it back till end of this year or till next summer. Um, because getting these your additional 10 hours requires you to be in an in-house class. And it's, hey, we can't, I can't go to in-house class. Plus, I don't have, uh, I, I can't go to in-house class because there are none. And it's a, it's a shutdown right now. Um, you know, we can't be, nobody can't take classes can't be confined in the space to take a course um so i don't know what the deal with that we can find out i could find out later on today what's going on with that if they're going to change it if they're going to change the date to you know if they're going to switch it up to probably end of this year or next year don't know zayfail says do those do dol cards have numbers on them or could i buy some card stock and print my own they have numbers on them, but uh, they have a different design now. Originally, it was a yellow uh, card that would say OSHA, and it was a Department of Labor card. It will say your the, the the hour course, like your ten hour, or thirty hour. It'll have the number. It'll have the proctor's name, and it was a it was a yellow card. Uh, I, there were reports of uh, quite a few uh, courses. Uh, fake courses, in-house courses, where guys will go to the, the in-house course, get their OSHA card, but it was a white card. 
and um, it'll say OSHA certified or whatever, and they'll say, oh, well, they said it was an OSHA certified class. The OSHA inspector looks at that card. He's going to tell you to go home. He's like, this is not this is not a DOL card. DOL card is a yellow card. Now, they changed it up. They uh, The DOL card is now white with a yellow or orange stripe across, uh, which is now the updated version of the DOL card. I have it. I got it from this website. Um, you know, it takes about eight weeks for the card to come in by mail. S sometimes six. It depends on the when you finish the the course and uh, how fast you finish it. The faster, the better you get on the on the course, and the sooner you can get the card. Um, but yeah, they they they're cracking down on that, and they have a barcode in the back of the card. There's a, a barcode scanner where the um, the inspector will literally take out their phone, scan it to see if it's an actual legit card, and if it's if it's not, you're screwed. Uh, so they're they're making everything high tech with these things, man. They're you know it's new technologies out, so they're gonna do whatever it takes to make sure everyone in on a job site has an official DOL card and they're they have legit OSHA. Uh, OSHA certification cards. Let's see here. We have. So yeah, you can't. If you try to duplicate it, you're most likely it's gonna get scanned. If the scan doesn't go through, you're screwed. So just to be clear, you can't really do that. I mean, I've seen guys do like exact duplicates. They will call that number. They will get that number uh, scanned through. It may take a while, but they will eventually find out it's not you're not that person. If it if it matches to someone else's card, that's legit. You're screwed. You're you you may even get a fine. I don't know. You, that's that's basically illegal. <laughs> you can't really do that. Um, you can get into big trouble with that. So um, don't try to you know make fake cards or uh, pay someone to take courses for you because let me tell you something. Um, in reality, these OSHA guys will tell you, uh, these OSHA inspectors will approach you. Um, you know, it may not be the, you may think, well, they, they won't approach me because I'm just a worker. Believe it or not, they, they, they always say pick you up randomly. They pick people randomly. It doesn't matter if you're a supervisor, you're, a, you're the owner, uh, you're just an apprentice. They will ask you a question about OSHA, you know, some OSHA rules and OSHA standards. And you have to answer them. You best have the, a good answer. If you don't know the answer, they're going to look at you and be like, um, yeah, you sure your car? They want to see your car and they want to take pictures and scan it. And if it doesn't go through or anything, you're in big trouble. <laughs> so make sure you're taking those courses. Um, even if it is a legit car and you don't know the answer, they're, they're going to figure out eventually that you had someone take the test or take the course for you. Uh, because if you're found to be incompetent and you have an OSHA card, that raises a lot of eyebrows and a lot of red flags. So be very careful. Um, I would suggest taking the time. Uh, do it online. Do it on your phone. You can do it directly on your phone, 360 training on your phone. There's no app, but you can do it on the actual website. Um, at any time, day or night, whatever, um, it's fine. So... Yeah, just don't 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 try to cheat. Don't don't uh, don't ever try to cheat. Uh, now I know some of you say, "Well, it's impossible to remember everything." Look, we get that. I, I get it. Too. I don't remember everything, but I do remember the important things that I go through day in and day out, like getting on ladders and you know was it was you know what are the standards of getting ladders? What are the rules of you know uh, extension cords? What to look for inside? If you see a a, a hole uh, through a floor that goes down the next floor, you have to seal it up. Make sure it's marked or put caution tape. You know, you see a ledge without a safety barrier, inform your supervisor. Do what it takes to make the job as safe as possible and be the competent one. You want to be the competent one on the job site as well. All right. All right. So now let's see here rules for everyone working under them. Uh, I think we read this already. Okay. So here we go. Yes. Uh, this other sorry, this is the part I didn't, I didn't finish reading. Thirty-hour courses differ by industry. With an industry-specific program for construction workers, OSHA 30 Construction 
and a general industry for everyone else. General industry is perfect for manufacturing, warehousing, distribution, healthcare, and other medium to high risk industries. Do I need construction or general industry training? You require OSHA construction training if you are a construction worker or a contractor. OSHA includes all work for construction alteration, repair, painting, and decoration and decorating in its construction category. Some construction workers may need additional training for specialized work, and anyone with supervisory responsibilities should take OSHA 30 hour construction safety outreach training. General industry is much broader. It includes, but is not limited to, healthcare, manufacturing, warehouse, warehousing, distribution, and retail. For more specialized work, OSHA requires specific training. Examples include when working in confined spaces, operating heavy equipment, and working with hazardous chemicals. Um, the hazardous chemical one, I have a certification for that. Um, I purchased that with the OSHA 10 construction and general industry, and um, it came with also the hazardous chemical uh, certification. I do have that. I actually have to find it because I actually made two accounts, and I'm trying to require that certification. Um, how do you get an OSHA DOL card? You can earn an official DOL card by completing an OSHA outreach training program. Instead of providing training itself, OSHA lays out the rules for these programs and approves third parties to administer the education. These third parties, like 360 Training, undergo a rigorous training process. In selecting an OSHA training provider and DOL card, make sure they are OSHA authorized. You can confirm their credentials on OSHA's website. Also, when you're taking, some of you may think right now, um, like, how would you, don't you need a proctor? Sorry, let me switch that up. Don't you need a proctor to what, like, supervise and make sure you guys are taking, there, yes, there are proctors, online proctors that actually, they'll see you log in. They will see what module and what unit you are on. They they can look at your test scores because every module has every end of the module has a final exam. They will check it. You get three chances, by the way. You get three chances to take those final exams after each like uh, chapter or unit or module. Um, so after each end of the module, you'll get you'll be given an exam. I'm sorry, uh, final exam. And you you get three chances to answer the questions correctly. Um, if you pass through all those and take the final exam at the end of the course, uh, which is only 10, about 10 to 20 questions, um, and it's not that difficult. It really isn't. It really is not difficult. Um, it's quite easy. And if you pass through it, they will go every, they will go through all your test scores, your grades. They will put a stamp of approval that they proctored you. They, they monitored your progression. Um, they made sure it's you because you're going to have questions that only you would know. Um, and they will monitor that as well, making sure that it's, it's actually you taking the test, taking the course. And uh, they will approve the hours that you that was given to you. And they'll basically put their name, the proctor's name, and uh, your identification number. And they send you the card within, I think, six to eight weeks. So uh, let's see here where is my arrow so let us continue how long is OSHA training good for okay here's the question everybody wants everybody wants to know DOL cards don't expire at the federal level however some states or industries have particular particular yeah recurrence requirements even if they don't we recommend you renew your training every three to four years to stay up to date with any osha regulation changes shop online now for osha 30 hour training course so yes um here in new york city they want you to it, it's actually every four years they want you to renew your card your osha card now if you flip the back of your osha card it says it has no expiration I get that. Some states don't require you to take it, but this website 
uh, or OSHA itself, they recommend you take it every three to four years. Um, but in some states, they just let you, you know, they let you zip by with it, whatever. Um, here in New York, they, they require you every four years to retake the course. Uh, because they do tend to upgrade, uh, upgrade, update um, the courses. And there's always more regulations, more rules, more uh, more uh, additional rules in the, in the OSHA standard. Um, so you have to keep updating. You know, they keep updating all this information because they collect data all around the United States. And uh, they want to make sure that, you know, any undiscoverable hazards that they end up discovering later on is included. And they want to make sure you look out for these uh, these hazards. All right. So that's about it i mean i gave you guys this is the website um now i didn't get a chance to leave it in the description box i will later on i'll leave a link in the description box down below uh i know there's nothing in the description box right now uh that says any links on it but i will leave it on later on after this video uh i hope that you guys what's going on i hope that you guys um you know, or being safe out there. If you're working during the pandemic and you're in the, in the job site you have, you're already up to date with your OSHA card. That's great um, for you apprentices and helpers. If you're starting in any trade, you want to get into like plumbing, carpentry, um, construction, uh, general construction, um, you know, or general contractor. Uh, you want to work under general contractor, whatever. Anything in, in in the trades you want and it, that involves construction on a big job site, you need to have your OSHA uh, 10 or OSHA 30. Uh, like I said, your states may vary, but those of you who live here um, in New York City, um, like myself, you are required to take your OSHA 30 and then get an additional 10 hours if you want to stay on the job. If you're if you want to keep working and staying on the job site, uh, the minimum is at least 40 hours. Or you can go if your employer or your boss, um, they offer you to take an SST course. I would take it. It's it's not going to come out of your pocket. Uh, it may take longer. It's a it takes a while to get you know through those courses because I've I've got guys I know on the job site who especially my foreman. Um, he's he was still taking his course. He finally finished. Uh, took him a couple of a couple of months. I believe so it's a, it's a you know it's a weekend weekend thing so it takes it, it, it takes the time off his weekend to do it um oh you can also to check this out get your dol card in two weeks uh so you can get a replacement in two weeks and check it out 159 for the osha 30 hour training course so it is 159 dollars not 180 dollars right so they take 30 dollars off and it's 159 dollars for osha 30 hour training um but use the code right here here it is this is the code. They have it on the website. Look at that. They didn't even see that there. So if you're wanting to get into that, go right ahead. There it is. You also get a free COVID-19 awareness training. They have special offers. You can see on the far right. Um, and also the $30 off ha uh, has Whopper 40-hour training by using this promo code at the checkout. So they 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 got some promotions during this pandemic. So I if I were you, I would take advantage of it. Uh, you know, for especially you helpers and apprentices, first year apprentices, if you don't have your OSHA yet, I would take this time right now. If you're on unemployment, you're getting some money in an unemployment. Invest in this. Um, so that way, when all this is over and it's time to get back to work, you're well prepared. All right. So listen. Um, but always remember guys that um
Test one, two. Can you hear me? You guys can hear me now? I have to go get an echo here. All right, so it, it's it's my it's my camera. It's it's definitely it's definitely my my HD camera. There is it's I don't know what's going on with that. I'm so sorry if you guys haven't heard me. So what I was trying to say was, um, yeah, that's weird. All right, so it, it's it's my. Yeah, this thing is really slow. What I was saying is that um, just be safe out there when you're working. Uh, if you're an apprentice and a helper, please use this information. Take the time to take the course. If you're at home collecting unemployment, take the... Uh, I'm looking at this camera. I don't know why. I'm so used to it. <laughs> please take the time to uh, whatever unemployment you're using, invest that, you know, invest on taking these courses. They're very important. Um that's odd. Why is it not going up and down? Your audio is off. Can't hear what you're saying. Yeah, the audio is a little iffy on the camera for some reason. It's, I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to uh, fix that. But as I was saying, um, hopefully you apprentices and helpers out there take advantage of this. Um, if you're collecting, like I said, collect unemployment, invest in it, take the time. That way when things start opening up again, you're well prepared. Uh, now, for um, those of you working in hospitals, uh, this is just another certification under your belt. I would definitely go for the uh, OSHA industry uh, part of it, and it, it, it's not really that long. It's it's quite short, and you can get your certification. Uh, it's only about an hour, maybe half hour long. Uh, so yeah, take the time, take that. You know, you want as much certifications under your belt. Because the you know the more you know uh, the more uh, how you say what's that saying I'm looking for again gosh I don't know what is going on with me guys <laughs> uh, the more you know the more you earn or the more you yeah so the more you know the more you earn I'm just gonna say it like that I guess that's how it goes <laughs> but anyways guys listen um, I want to say thanks for watching um, be safe out there. Be vigilant. Um, always remember to wear your personal protective equipment. Watch each other's back. Help one another out. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy, everybody. Have a great night. Have you ever felt Are you listening? Damn.